Rev up your engines and fasten your seatbelts because Toyota is about to revolutionize the automotive world. Buckle in for an electrifying ride as we unveil their latest game changer, the all-new zero-emission hydrogen-powered vehicle set to send shockwaves through the industry. So, gear up and get ready to witness automotive history in the making as Toyota unleashes their hydrogen-powered masterpiece, poised to revolutionize the way we drive and pave the way for a brighter, cleaner tomorrow. Don't miss out on the electrifying ride of a lifetime. Toyota's hydrogen revolution is just getting started. Toyota managed to make the Mirai thanks to their record-breaking hybrid technology, as the basic concept of hybrid power was, in essence, adapted to produce fuel cell electric vehicles. The sales of the first-generation Mirai were very limited, as the car was only sold in Japan and California. However, this was planned as Toyota wanted to see how their hydrogen-powered cars would perform in the real world. So even though there were only a couple of thousands of Mirais on the road, it was deemed successful enough to spawn a second generation, which was considerably more ambitious than its predecessor. The second generation Toyota Mirai is unlike its Prius-like predecessor, an actual luxury sedan. It offers pristine levels of luxury and comfort, while also looking extremely handsome. Honestly, check it out, isn't she a beauty? The sales figures have also jumped compared to the first generation, as there are now tens of thousands of Mirais on the road. Even though the second gen was launched only two years ago, this is because, unlike its predecessor, the ongoing Mirai is offered in the US, Europe, and Asia for sale. It proved that the market for FCEVs is blooming, which is why Toyota decided to step up their game and give us a new FCEV. What is this new vehicle? We lied. Actually, as Toyota, in all reality, decided to give us not one but two FCEVs. First of all, Toyota decided to redesign the ongoing Mirai. As good as it is, the current-gen Toyota Mirai had its issues. Namely, the space on the inside leaves much to be desired, as the hydrogen tanks are located beneath the rear seats and the center console, making them extremely cramped. Even though the car shares its underpinnings with the ginormous Lexus LS, the redesigned Mirai will have better placement of the tanks, which will allow more legroom and headroom. Apart from the redesigned interior, we'll be getting a new version of the car called the Toyota Mirai Sport, which will be aesthetically considerably different from the regular Mirai. The front bash of the car showcases a redesigned bumper that largely departs from the standard Mirage chrome infused grille. Instead, the Mirai Sport will have a smaller and lower position grille, similar to the one on the newest generation Toyota Prius, and it will also have three slits positioned above the license plate. The addition of a black trim piece between the headlights complements the car's much sportier appearance, and the change of color for the trim, which is now shiny black, makes it look even more menacing. The Mirai Sport has also gotten a bunch of new stuff in the back too, as it now has a rear diffuser finished in a glossy black color complementing the front of the car. All of this has been highlighted by the addition of a subtle black spoiler, and certain body panels are adorned in a carbon-style weave wrap. The main complaint with the Toyota Mirai was the complete lack of fun behind the wheel, as the car was all but engaging to drive. And to compensate for the lack of sportiness, Toyota decided to fit the Mirai Sport with a fresh set of wheels. Toyota decided to ditch their boring OEM wheels, instead opting for the BBS-style 21-inch alloy rims, combined with Michelin Pilot Sports S tires. This combination will allow the car to attack the corners much more precisely and stably, while also making it look much more aggressive. The suspension has also been lowered by 20 millimeters, which might not sound like much. However, it'll significantly help with body roll and contribute to improving handling dynamics which also having a noticeable effect on the stance of the vehicle. However, the Mirai isn't the only FCEV that's getting released. As alongside it, Toyota will reveal its all-new Toyota Crown sedan, which will share its platform with the current-gen Mirai. However, it'll be a tad longer, sitting around 5.03 meters long, and will also have a completely different interior that will be much more upmarket compared to the Toyota Mirai. Which leads us to the question, what are the benefits of using hydrogen-powered vehicles over EVs? 
The benefits are actually numerous. However, they can all be summed up with the fact that FCEVs are actually much greener than their EV counterparts. EVs, technically speaking, don't pollute. However, the energy that they use up needs to be produced somewhere, and the production of said energy is more often than not devastating to the environment. Compare that to FCEVs, which utilize the most abundant gas in the universe and don't require to be connected to the grid to be recharged, and you can easily see the long-term appeal of FCEVs over EVs. In fact, it's believed that a regular vehicle needs to do more than 100, 150,000 miles to achieve the pollution levels that the production of a singular EV creates. Furthermore, EV batteries are made out of lithium, which is extremely toxic to the environment, especially the one that surrounds the location where it's getting excavated. And since EVs require powerful batteries, there are virtually no alternatives at the moment that could replace lithium. FCEVs also use batteries. However, their batteries require considerably less power than EV batteries, which means that lithium can be replaced by a greener element, making FCEVs even more appealing to those that wish to preserve our planet. Oh, and there's also a party trick of FCV sleeve, and that's the fact that it actually makes the air cleaner. You see, to create electricity, FCEVs combine oxygen with hydrogen, essentially creating water. When the water evaporates, the oxygen is returned to the atmosphere. However, thanks to the filtration system that is fitted to FCEVs, it comes out virtually completely clean, meaning that by driving FCEVs in densely populated cities, we'll actually start cleaning the air that we breathe by technically recycling it. Now, this won't completely fix the problem of air pollution. However, it's a step in the great direction towards a much cleaner future, and you don't even have to do anything. And thanks to the virtually endless supply of hydrogen, recharging FCEVs can potentially cost pennies or less, which makes them possibly one of the most economical options for the future of transportation. Potentially, you see hydrogen as now simply isn't cheap due to numerous factors. Hydrogen is at the moment more expensive than fossil fuels, let alone EVs. Hydrogen requires specific conditions to be stored as it's a highly flammable and highly explosive gas when in contact with external factors. It needs to be kept cool constantly, which means that the tanks and pumps will be much more complicated than regular gas station pumps and EV chargers. Plus, since hydrogen needs special conditions for it to be stored, it currently is nearly as green as it can pretend actually be. Especially if we take into consideration the fact that converting hydrogen is highly inefficient, as there's a lot of waste gas that escapes during the process, making hydrogen a questionable choice, at least for now when it comes down to green energy. Furthermore, most metals actually decay significantly faster when exposed to hydrogen which means that servicing and maintaining the tanks will be a much more frequent occurrence. And it also means that we'll need to replace the tanks regularly. And even if we found a way to avoid these problems, which we won't, at least not shortly, we'd still be met with a problem that would take ages to fix. And that is logistics, or to be more precise, infrastructure. FCEVs simply aren't practical for daily usage at the moment. Most European countries and most U.S. states are more than limited when it comes down to FCEV recharging stations. Yes, FCEVs have a longer range than EVs, and yes, they're much faster to recharge in the first place. However, what good is that when you don't have a place to do that? Even EVs, which are currently extremely popular, have a problem with charging stations, and they are more than 100 times more plentiful than FCEV charging stations. And that should be enough to steer you away from FCEVs. Oh, and the previously mentioned Toyota Mirai Sport is just a concept car. And while it might enter production, there haven't been any official statements that confirm this. The Toyota Crown Sedan is coming out this autumn. However, it's going to be sold virtually exclusively in Asia and in limited numbers, just like its predecessors. Plus, Toyota is already tackling the EV segment with their own battery-powered EVs, as Koji Sato. Still, Toyota is not giving up on their FCEVs, as they still believe that hydrogen is the way of the future.
and the fact that China is highly invested in purchasing and using hydrogen vehicles from Toyota, the company might get the perfect starting ground for it to keep building and developing the FCEV infrastructure. However, until they find a way to make hydrogen more affordable and their vehicles more efficient and, above all else, more powerful, FCEVs will be no match for EVs, even though they might be potentially greener for the environment in the long run. However, EVs are in huge trouble currently, as Toyota's CEO announced that the entire market is about to experience a huge problem since the rare minerals used for EV batteries are almost completely depleted. If you'd like to learn more about the imminent danger that's approaching EVs, be sure to check out this video.